Welcome back to the Gretel instructional video series. In this video, we will be learning how to use Gretel to perform three specification tests that we did not cover in the last video. The only file that you will need to follow along with this video is gasoline consumption. The four items covered in this video are as follows. First, we will estimate a double log model. Next, we will perform the Durbin-Watson test as well as Durbin's alternative test. Finally, we will perform the QSIM test. We will be using a new dataset in this video. It is a dataset provided as a sample file in Gretel. The file is called green7 underscore 8 and it contains gasoline price and consumption data. This file is used for several examples in William Green's textbook Econometric Analysis. I have modified the original file so that all of the variables are in per capita and real dollar values. Now, let's open Gretel and get started by discussing the dataset. The first step is to open the data series Gasoline Consumption. To do this, click on File from the main menu, followed by Open Data, and then User File. Now, locate the file. Once it has been located, double-click to open. Notice that there are eight variables. We are interested in the first four variables, which are the log of the last four variables. The first of these variables is the log of per capita gasoline consumption. The second is the log of per capita income. The third variable is the log for the real price of gasoline. And the last variable is the real price for new cars. Before performing any specification tests, we must estimate a regression equation. The regression equation that we want to run is per capita gasoline consumption as a function of income, the real price of gasoline, and the real price of new cars. We are going to use the double log functional form because the coefficient estimates on the slope terms can be interpreted as estimates of elasticities. One thing to keep in mind is that the double log functional form assumes that elasticities are fixed. Now, let's go back to the main Gretel screen and estimate this regression equation. We will now estimate the regression exactly the same way as in the previous videos. First, select Model from the main menu, followed by Ordinary Least Squares. In the window that pops up, select the variable L underscore PC underscore G as a dependent variable, and the three remaining variables that start with L underscore as independent variables. Once you click OK, the OLS output will open in a new window. Now, let's quickly review the interpretation of the coefficient estimates. The coefficient on the first variable is the income elasticity. It indicates that a 1% increase in per capita income increases per capita gasoline consumption by 1.43%. The coefficient on the second variable is the own price elasticity. It indicates that an increase in the real price of gasoline by 1% decreases per capita gasoline consumption by 0.25%. The last coefficient indicates that an increase in the real price of new cars decreases per capita gasoline consumption by 0.56%. It is also important to note that each of the variables are significant and the signs for each of the coefficients agree with economic theory. Now that we have estimated the regression equation, we can start to perform the specification tests. Do not close the output from the OLS estimation until the end of this video because we will be using the menu on the OLS output to perform all of the specification tests. The first test that we are going to perform is the Durbin-Watson test. It is an autocorrelation test with a null hypothesis of no first order autocorrelation against the alternative of AR1 errors. Actually, the Durbin-Watson test has two null and alternative hypotheses, which test for positive and negative correlation. The critical values are quite complicated and depend on the number of variables in the model, as well as the sample size. Also, the test is very limited because it can only be used if the regression model contains a constant and if it does not include a leg-dependent variable. Both requirements are satisfied in this case, but often they are not. For this reason, I'm just going to show you where the Durbin-Watson test statistic is located and then move on to Durbin's alternative test, which is much more useful. Now let's go back to the OLS output to do this. 
At the bottom of the OLS output, you can see Durbin Watson and the value 0 0.605. This is not the p-value, rather it is the Durbin Watson statistic. To find the p-value, click on Tests from the menu, followed by Durbin Watson p-value. The window that pops up contains the p-value, which is very small, so we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is positive AR1. Now let's move to Durbin's alternative test for autocorrelation. The null hypothesis of Durbin's alternative test is no ARP and the alternative is ARP. We are going to test for AR1. To perform this test, go back to the OLS output. From the OLS output window, select Tests from the menu followed by Autocorrelation. In the window that pops up, type in 1 because we are testing for AR1. Remember, this value can be any number. Let's look at the output for Durbin's alternative test. The test statistic and Durbin's alternative test are found beside the alternative statistic. In this case, the critical value is 17.086 and the p-value is very small, so we reject the null hypothesis in favor of AR1. This means that the model suffers from autocorrelation and that the standard errors in the OLS regression are incorrect. The robust standard errors option that we used in the previous video to correct for heteroscedasticity can also be used to correct for autocorrelation. An additional option if it is an AR1 process is to use Cork or HILU, which can be found on the main Gretel screen by selecting Tests from the main menu followed by Time Series. Now let's move on to the third specification test. The third specification test is a QSIM test, and it tests for structural stability of the parameters. We are going to use the graph to perform the QSIM test. If the test crosses the 95% confidence band even once, the coefficients are not structurally stable. If the test does cross the 95% confidence band, all we can say is that there is a structural change at some point up to and including that time point. You may want to use the sequential Chow test to help you pinpoint the break. Now let's move back to the OLS output to perform this test. To perform the QSIM test, select Tests from the menu followed by QSIM test. Now look at the window with the graph. You can see that the red line does not cross the 95% confidence band, which means that the coefficients are structurally stable. This concludes the last specification test covered in this video. We have now finished learning how to use Gretel to perform three specification tests. Before wrapping up the video, let me summarize the three key points to remember. Number one, the double log model assumes that elasticities are fixed. Number two, the Durbin-Watson test cannot be used if there is a leg-dependent variable in the regression equation. And number three, the QSIM plot cannot be used to determine the exact time of the structural change. This concludes the fifth video in the Gretel Instructional Video Series.